Renee asked, she says, hi, do you mind if I read it out loud, Renee? Okay, she says, hi, Helen, I would love to tap on the season's affective disorder. Sad, you know, some, uh, some people are affected by that, that I'm starting to experience again this fall. Lovely. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Renee. And I'll, I'll give everybody a little insight. This is, you know, the things I say usually don't align with Western medicine or, or psychology or anything like that. I think a lot of our sad, yeah, some of it is actually due to light and you can get more light and vitamin D3 and all that stuff. But I also have experienced this enough to know that, uh, and I'm not the only one, that we have um, seasonally recurring emotional events and we may not be aware of them. All right, so I just wanted to get that out there. So what's your, tell me what's your experience currently with SAD? Right. Why do they call um, it SAD? I know. <clears throat> well, I've lived in Oregon for 19 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, I always lived in places where there was more light. And um, I have a history of depression anyway. So mm -hmm. um, when I moved here, I was like, oh, no big deal, you know. That doesn't apply to me. <laughs> yeah. But I did notice that I would become a lot more irritable and just incredibly tired this time of year. Okay. And some years it's worse than others. And I, I haven't been able to gauge it because actually one of the worst years of my life was about five years ago and I had terrible compassion fatigue and I didn't experience sad that year. I was probably already too whacked out to notice or whatever, but mm -hmm. um but the, the part that also makes me so sad about it or that I feel so sad about the sad is that my favorite season is fall or okay. autumn. Mm -hmm. And so I, I am not able to enjoy it or I haven't been able to enjoy it the way I want to um, because I feel like I have – right now it's – not, I can just feel it coming on because it usually. What do you is, notice that show, tells you that it's coming on? That I want to sleep all the time. Um, that I just, I really want to sleep a lot, and that I, um, I'm more irritable. Okay, all right. And is there any person or situation where you feel more irritable? Like you know, like uh oh, here we go. Or is it just um, general irritability? It's just general irritability, like just a heightened sense of irritability. Okay. Impatience. Um, the only person I'm interacting that much with net right now is my husband. And we've actually gotten in a really good groove over COVID. So, uh -huh. um, and he can, he's really good at telling me, you know, you need to tone it down. So what does he, he mean? Tone it down. Um, when I get a little, when I get, um, just amped up or um, anxious or when, when I'm being critical of him or when I'm um, when you're out of your higher consciousness, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to go back to those, let's see, what do you believe about the SAD? What do you, what do you believe about it? Um, I believe that it comes on um, at fall equinox and it lasts until winter solstice okay that's for me what historically happened so from september 22nd to december 22nd mm -hmm. so i i breathe a sigh of relief on winter solstice like okay i made it i my what else do i believe about it that i don't understand why some years it's worse than others okay I, I, that it's unpredictable. That's what I believe about it. Um, you described it sounds pretty predictable. I mean, two things about it, that it comes on mm -hmm. in the fall. Um, equinox. Equinox and ends on the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty predictable, but everything else about it you think is unpredictable? Well, from year to year, mm -hmm. I don't know why some years are worse than others. And I do have a light that I sit in front of and I'm, I've got it right here. I'm ready to get it out. <laughs> that, that helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, let's just, let's take the practical part first during the, during the fall when
and this time of year comes on and you find yourself wanting to sleep more, mm -hmm. do you get outside? Yeah, I'm a dog walker. So, I mean, that's probably the saving grace is okay. that no matter what the weather is like, mm -hmm. I get out there. Okay. So like I always say, if you want to change anything, you got to change your thinking. So let's investigate this through that lens about what you think about SAD. Have you, I mean, have you ever had a medical professional tell you that's what you're suffering from or anything like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because sometimes that can be a problem too. Just having the diagnosis. What did the person say? Um, I, my, my doctor who I really liked, uh -huh. he was like, yeah, I've got, I've got a bunch of patients just like you. And what I recommend is that you go somewhere sunny for a whole week during that time. And that helps. Okay. Um, and where do you usually go? I don't. Oh, you don't? Time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, usually um, I go somewhere sunny in about February. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that's oh, my... okay. A little later, not during this time. Okay. Yeah, I don't generally go during this time. It's, it's always historically been still really busy with my work. Okay. And because it's busy through October and then it might be late in the beginning of November and then it gets really busy during the holidays and into the new year. So mm -hmm. I, I basically don't do that. Okay. So let's, let's try this as you, I just wanted to check cause you know, it's good to check the, the obvious things first. Um, just close your eyes, tap on the side of your hand and just say, okay, body. Okay, body. Okay, mind. Okay, mind. I know you've been trying to communicate with me. I know you've been trying to communicate with me. Um, and so you give me the symptoms of SAD. And so you give me the symptoms of, of SAD. And right here, right now. And right here, right now. I'm wanting to understand a little better. I'm wanting to understand a little better. What you're really trying to tell me. What you're really trying to tell me. Okay. And then just listen, see what you get. Doesn't have to be profound. Well, I get that I'm taking on everybody else's stuff this time of year, which I thought I had, I thought I wasn't doing that anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mean like empathically taking on everybody else's stuff? Okay. Yeah, because there's, uh, it's a winding down this time of year and a lot of melancholy leading up to the winter. Okay. And so it, what I get is that I'm, I'm f feeling everybody else's angst about the winter coming. Okay. And, and then keep keep tapping and, and first say to your mind and body, say, thank you so much for that insight. Thank you so much for that insight. Okay. And now as you keep tapping, um, Renee, I want you to ask yourself, why would I want to take on everybody else's melancholy? And maybe that leads, you know, you've been getting this for a while. Maybe it's like, it's an old thing. Did you used to want to take on everybody's melancholy and now you don't, or you still do or? No, I mean, it just happened when I moved to Oregon and maybe there's part of me because I heard about sad, even though I didn't <laughs> think I registered it, you mm -hmm. know, until oh, yeah. I felt it. The unconscious mind remembers everything. Mm -hmm. What that, time of year did you move to Oregon? In August. Okay. And Where in October, it started raining and rained solid for five months that well, you year. Have, okay. Is it true? Did it really rain solid? It never stopped raining that one single day. It was a really rainy year. I just invite you to consider because we do that. We bundle it all toge together and say, oh my God, it rains every day. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't really, and then you tell yourself you don't like the rain, right? It's, right? It's dark and it's gloomy and sure. But I can pretty much bet. What year was that? 2001. Okay. I've never been here a year where it actually rained every single day. Right. For For more than, I don't know maybe six weeks, but even then it did stop occasionally, right? When you moved here, that's the other thing I want to, because remember I said, sometimes we have 
annual, it's like, almost like an anniversary of a, of a sadness. Were you excited to move to Oregon? Oh, totally. But you know what? 9-11 happened. Yes, it did. 9-11 happened okay. a month right after, after you moved we moved here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is good because um, I think you might have hit on something. Mm -hmm. When you think about 9-11, just now I got this feeling while we were talking about it, there was like uh, almost like a, an unsobbed sob. Hmm. Did you, uh, did you um, heal your 9-11 wounding? No. No. You and how many other people, right? You think about 9-11 and we're talking about 2001. What emotion comes up for you? Um, isolation and fear. Because my husband, my first husband, we, we only knew so, this couple, these friends of ours. They were the only people I knew here. And my husband traveled for business and he was in Denver. So he was away and I was alone. And he couldn't get back for a week. So I was, I was, I felt isolated and, um, afraid. Yeah. Afraid of, yeah. What were you afraid of? Afraid of, um, how, when would he ever be able to get back? Okay. Um, how long I would be, how long I would be alone. Okay. All right. Notice, that as you think about that, that time that was now 19 years ago, mm -hmm. what, am, what do you feel right now? What's the intensity of your feeling of isolation and fear or, or just having that memory? What do you feel? Well, gosh, it's going down as we're speaking. It and was tapping, yeah. Yeah. That's what it does. I mean, it was probably a seven when, you, we, when I first said that I had isolation and fear, and, mm -hmm. and now it already feels like a four. Okay. Just Check in with that four and, and what, what's in there? What's still in there? Maybe this is the part of you that didn't, didn't ever even think. We didn't think, oh my gosh, I need to take care of myself. We had so many other people we were feeling compassion for. I mm -hmm. think we forget that, oh yeah, I need to take care of my own trauma first. And then, and then I can reach out with empathy or compassion. So right. um, what's in that number four, that four intensity? Well, yeah, it's, it's an intense grief. Okay. Um, you know, I had, I was away from all the family. We had just moved away from everybody to start in this new place. Mm -hmm. um, and also I didn't understand about being an empath then. I was pretty psychically shut down. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even understand about okay. taking on other people's I'm going to invite you to do something right now. Just, to, uh, just not to okay. interrupt, sorry, but I want to, no, you just, when you hit on something, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, let's just use this. Just tap and allow yourself in this moment to open that up sort of completely. Because if you shut it down, that's probably what's stopping things up. Um, mm -hmm. Open it up right now. Open up everything you felt that just that morning. Not after and all of that, but just that morning when you heard about what was going on or you s I saw it on the television. Um, so just just feel those feelings um, because there's probably some other stuff mixed up in there. Grief. So break down grief into the different parts of grief. It's sadness. What else were you feeling? Disbelief. Um, anger, um, helplessness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just notice that that's what we call grief. So imagine it again in that, that image that I sent you guys a couple weeks ago of the, the tangled up ball of all the different colors of yarn. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get these feelings untangled and released okay so if you notice any other feelings let me know but emotions but disbelief anger sadness helplessness and there was one that oh terror oh Did yeah you feel terror okay. oh yes okay 
Yes. So of those, just starting with those five, which one feels the most intense? I'll read them again. Disbelief, anger, sadness, helplessness, and terror. Disbelief. Okay. And where would you rate that right now? An eight. Okay. So let's start there. Just tap and say, even though I can still feel this disbelief. Even though I can still feel this disbelief. About what happened on September 11th, 2001. On what, hap uh, on what happened September 11th, 2001. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I'm open to believing that it did happen. And I'm open to believing it did happen. I choose to no longer resist. I choose to no longer resist. That it did happen. That it did happen. Okay. It's, it's our resistance that keeps it growing in our psyche, right? It's the resistance. So bring it up and just say, even though I feel this disbelief. Even though I feel this disbelief. At an eight intensity. At an eight intensity. Even 19 years later. Even 19 years later. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I choose to be completely open. And I choose to be completely open. Um, and surrender my disbelief. <sighs> and surrender my disbelief. Okay, what just happened? Oh, I just it felt like a gusher just of disbelief just came out okay because you described it you gave all the clues like you got something stuck away there right we push it away so just tap around and say disbelief disbelief on the eyebrow i was in a state of disbelief i was in a state of disbelief side of the eye i was um in denial i was in denial under the eye i was in resistance i was in resistance under the nose and yet i felt so many feelings and yet I felt so many feelings. On the chin. So I know it actually happened. So I know it actually happened. Collarbone. And now I'm allowing that it actually happened. Now I'm allowing that it actually happened. Under the arm. Letting my feelings flow through me. Letting my feelings flow through me. And what did you call it? A big, what did you call it? Like a... A, a big, uh, what did I say? Flood of disbelief? Uh -huh. what, what, Wave. A wave of yeah, gusher. Gusher. gusher, gusher, oh yeah, yeah. And, gusher. and then I experienced a gusher of disbelief. And then I experienced a gusher of disbelief. Okay, so just keep breathing, just keep tapping, and let that, that disbelief feeling just let it go. The, disbelief or what it, denial or whatever you want to call it is a coping strategy. Yeah, it's more intense then you could handle that moment, right? For, and it was for so many people. Um, and so I bet you there are millions, maybe, maybe tens of millions of people around the planet who are still suffering PTSD from that day. And they, ha they don't even know what it is, but every year around this time, something comes up and they don't recognize, mm. you know, why am I so angry and agitated? Mm -hmm. Okay. And why do I have seasonal affective disorder when I never had it before? Oh, yeah, because I moved to Oregon. But really, maybe it had nothing to do with that. It mm -hmm. might, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah. All right. So now I want you to check in with your disbelief. Think about September 11th, 2001, and feel into your feeling of disbelief right now and give me a, an intensity rating. It was at an eight. Where is it now? It's at a one. Okay. Um, what, what's still in there? What's, I mean, th for this one in particular, it seems like, well, we went from an eight to a one. What's hanging in there? Yeah. Um, well, it feels more like the isolation now than the disbelief. Um, okay. So it's kind of moved. Uh, well, I just want, that's why I want yeah. you to, to take these emotions and, you know, detangle right. them. And I'm but, almost ready to belch, which is what I always do when I'm ready to. So excuse me, everybody. No, belch. that's good that you're, you know. So what I'm going to do as you wait for yourself to belch is check in with these <laughs> other emotions that you said were uh, parts of grief mm -hmm. and see what's still there. So we'll go through them. Anger, sadness, helplessness, and terror. And see if any of those are lighting up for you right now. 
Um, I think the helplessness. Okay. Zero to 10. Well, how does it feel right now when you, and, and think about September 11, 2001, that morning when you either saw or heard the news, that feeling of helplessness as you remember that. All right. How helpless do you feel right now? You mean the intensity that I feel that helplessness or how that helplessness help about September 11th. Yeah. Right. Um, it's a seven. Okay. All right. So check the helplessness and um, I'm sure that's a common emotion, but you don't have to hang on to it. We're going to tap slightly differently. Just tap and say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments on the eyebrow to this feeling of helplessness. To this feeling of helplessness. Side of the eye from September 11th, 2001. From September 11th, 2001. And just tap around and notice anything you might notice. That's a, that's a good relief sigh. Okay. What are you noticing, uh, Renee? Well, it just feels like I've... I've had this huge weight on me about it that I didn't even know I had. I feel angry. Okay. I feel angry that, um, that I hung on to it this long and that it was, I feel actually, I feel a lot of anger at my ex-husband for being gone at that time too. Oh, damn him. I know. It's almost like he planned it. Mm-hmm. Because he was back in Denver where we just moved from. Right. With all your friends. And did he, do you think he planned it that way? <laughs> no. <laughs> did he try to come back? Yes. Okay. But, you know, all the airports were shut down that day and for that, like, several days after. Feel mm -hmm. the anger. Zero to ten. It's a nine. Okay. And just check in. Are you only angry at him? Or is there anything? Is what else are you angry at? No, I'm only angry at him. Okay, just start tapping on your head. Say I'm because we were on the we were on the downhill slide anyway. Oh, okay, okay. So before we start tapping, this is what I would check into. Were you angry at him only for that? No. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> this is how our emotions become this like muddled up mess of who knows what. But just say this anger. This anger at my ex husband. And my ex-husband. I have been carrying this anger around for a long time. I have been carrying this anger around for a long time. Since long before September 11th. Since long before September 11th. But now that I'm noticing it. But now that I'm noticing it. I'm realizing that I still had it today. I'm realizing that I still had it today. Yeah, this anger at my ex-husband. This anger at my ex-husband. And I at first told myself... And I at first told myself it was because he was in Denver. It was because he was in Denver with all of our friends and family, with all of our friends and family. And I was stuck in Portland and I was stuck in Portland and I only knew two people and I only knew two people. But really, as I go a little further, but really, as I go a little further, I realized that that's not really what I was angry at him about. I realized not the that only that's thing that that's not the only thing I was angry with him about. There were many other things. There were many other things. And I didn't have tapping back then. And I didn't have tapping back then. And I'm looking back now. I'm looking back now. And I'm beginning to see. And I'm beginning to see. How his behavior. How his behavior. Has actually launched me into higher consciousness. Has actually launched me into higher consciousness. And I'm feeling kind of grateful. And I'm feeling kind of grateful. A little angry. A little angry. But kind of grateful. But kind of grateful. Okay. And I'm ready to let this anger go. And I'm ready to let this anger go. Okay. And just sense into the anger that you felt on September 11th at your ex-husband. <laughs> and, and give me a rating now. <laughs> uh, it's a zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so I just want to point out to everybody this is why this type of work is so important is because we can start digging up stuff that we didn't even know was still there.
And I do encourage all of you to, you know, I've got some new stuff coming up, but I want you to get rid of all this old anger and, and uh, helplessness and disbelief and all of that stuff because it's, it's not, it's, it's keeping you from freedom, from higher consciousness. And I was thinking about powerlessness when we were tapping about 9-11. We weren't tapping on that. Well, um, not powerlessness, helplessness. And yes, with regard to what was going on there, we were helpless to do much, but we weren't completely helpless. And I, I want us all to, to begin to notice when we say, oh, I just, I feel so helpless. I can't do anything. But there's always something we can do now that we're awakening. And I know on, you know, people sent money and gifts and donations and, um, and made phone calls and prayed and praying was probably the best thing that we did. Um, and, and on, I was in California at the time and I remember what I did that day. And I created this beautiful planter full of, I called it my, I think I called it my peace planter because it felt like I needed some beauty that day. So, so I guess I was kind of already doing this work back then because people were like, you're doing what? And I'm like, that's what I'm doing. Not because I'm Pollyanna-ish, but I, I, have ha I had a sense back then that that would be the most powerful thing I could do. So I'm not, you know, just we, we can think differently. All right, so now um, it's kind of hard to measure you're sad now you're you know that it's coming up mm -hmm. but but you said you you were feeling like it was coming on it was starting to come on mm -hmm. um just sense into that feeling right now and you mentioned that you felt amped up or anxious or critical you know those are things that pop up when we're unconscious of what's going on we're not conscious but i'm not trying to force but just notice if anything else has shifted when you think about we're heading into fall what if I really could enjoy it the way I like to? Just say it out loud. Say, I'm going to enjoy the fall. I'm going to enjoy the fall. And notice if you feel resistance to that. It's okay if you do. I feel just a little bit of resistance in my heart. Okay. And what is that? Um, it's like trepidation. It feels like trepidation. What are, you, what are you trepidated about? What are you nervous about? Um, when you're talking about, I'm going to enjoy the fall. Right. Because um, I, I had this belief that I just couldn't enjoy the fall. Uh -huh. and so it's, it's a belief that I need right. to release. Yeah. So just kind of um, sense into that trepidation. This is what you're about to hopefully discover is something that I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think we com commonly do this very thing. This is what keeps us from changing and growing is we have an attachment to the belief. Well, I have set SAD, damn it. <laughs> you don't understand because you don't have it, right? I mean, I mean, there's a part of us. Okay, try this. I don't know, just tap and say, there's a part of my being. There's a part of my being. That wants to be acknowledged. That wants to be acknowledged. For how much I've suffered. For how much I've suffered. Okay, and just, just feel into that. And see if that's at all accurate. What if you were suddenly not afflicted with SAD? No, it was like this thing I could say, I can't do anything right now. I have sad. Like, oh, I can't okay. take on anything else right now because okay. I have my sad, my, I know my I'm, sad. Yeah. I'm, getting, I'm getting away from that language because this is a hard time of year for me. Okay, <laughs> okay so, so I just want to point out to everybody, this is why this type of work is so important is because we can start digging up stuff that we didn't even know was still there. And I do encourage all of you to, you know, I've got some new stuff coming up, but I want you to get rid of all this old anger and, and uh, helplessness and disbelief and all of that stuff because it's keeping you from freedom, from higher consciousness. And I was thinking about 
powerlessness when we were tapping about 9-11, not powerlessness, helplessness. And yes, with regard to what was going on there, we were helpless to do much, but we weren't completely helpless. And I, I want us all to, to begin to notice when we say, oh, I just, I feel so helpless. I can't do anything. But there's always something we can do now that we're awakening. And I know on, you know, people sent money and gifts and donations and, um, and made phone calls and prayed and praying was probably the best thing that we did. Just, we, we can think differently. But last year, I finished a book okay. during okay. this time all of right. year. All right. So tap and say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To my perceived powerlessness. To my perceived powerlessness. Side of the eye. And I choose to know. And I choose to know. Under the eye that I can say yes or no to anything I want. That I can say yes or no to anything I want. Yep. I'm choosing to um, take back my own authority. I'm choosing to take back my own authority. Okay. And just notice how that feels as you tell. Wow. Yeah. The key is you're not the same person you were a year ago or two years ago. Mm-hmm. And you can even, let's do one more tapping and then I'll see how you, you're doing. Just say, um, this SAD. This SAD. On the eyebrow is no longer relevant. Is no longer relevant. On the side of the eye, to who I've become. To who I've become. Okay, and just feel how that feels. Yeah. I hear a lot of sighing. That's good. Oh, yeah. Mm, it's just... Okay. Yeah. All right, so just take a deep breath. And just sense into that SAD again. And, and remember that autumn or fall is your favorite season. Mm-hmm. And see, Anne's even getting results. I know. I'm watching Anne yawn yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's amazing great. how Anymore. we help each other. <laughs> well, and the beautiful thing about doing this work, like we're kind of focused on you. And my unconscious mind would have full freedom to just bring up whatever it wants without fear. Yeah. Okay. All right. How do you yeah. feel now, Renee? Wow. I have no trepidation, no sense of dread, no sense of, I mean, cause it's, I, I feel like, wow, that is where I was living in level one mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm going into a huge product launch, um, shortly and I'm going to be doing it during this time. And so mm-hmm. I was, tr- I was trying to figure out how I was going to do that having sad. Yeah. And now, and now you don't I, have to. Now I don't have to. Yeah. Okay. So wow. Pretty amazing. And yeah. uh, and just breathe into your n- new body. You have a brand new body now than you did, and newer than it was an hour ago. Because yeah. everything, your cells just do this thing. When we release old stuff like that, they go back to their more natural state. Yeah. I just feel completely calm and excited for the fall. That is freedom in a nutshell it's like going back untangling stuff where did we start we start with you started with uh uh-oh i'm coming down with sad you know i'm (laughs) just coming down with sad and to discover that that's really not even what it was i mean in a way it is seasonal affective disorder but i and we do do things annually and never crossed my mind you had already decided that sad was the possibility Mm -hmm. And what if it's not? I'm going to say it's not. I'm going to say, you're not going to experience SAD anymore. How does that feel? Oh my God, it's so liberating. 